a bit of a difficult situation when it comes to the uh, concussion issue. Let's go back to the Ireland captaincy. Who is next? You've been calling for James Ryan the whole way along. And it's going to be Johnny Sexton, according to Jerry Thornley this morning in the Irish Times. As you say, the obvious candidate. Perhaps our view on this whole thing was affected by the fact that Johnny Sexton picked up a knock before Christmas and we thought that he wasn't going to be involved. For James the Ryan game. has a calf injury. Is so there, that's is true, there that, any that, possibility that's that that's feeding into this as well? That like they think, oh, he might not be fit for this game? Well, it can't be, can it? You can't pick your captain based on whether or not they're going to miss the first couple of games. But I'll p hold my hands up and say that uh, like, uh, on an... On some level, the Sexton injury did inform our discussion on this, and um, we, we weren't talking about him being in the starting team for Scotland, and James Ryan was going to be in the starting team for Scotland, and therefore we kind of picked him as captain. I think in an overall sense, this probably does make sense, and you have to trust that Andy Farrell sees a number of years that the, in Johnny Sexton. If, if you get to the end of 2021 still playing at a high level, still holding on to the number 10 jersey uh, fairly comfortably, then I think that's uh, he has to be captain. Uh, then the, the other flip side of that is if, when Joey Carberry comes back, is he going to be pushing for that 10 jersey? Is John Lee Sexton's position going to be in doubt? Because I don't know, I, I think that for a captain, you need to be. I know you're, you're against the, the idea of anybody being concrete in the, the squad, but I think you need to be as close to concrete as possible. Today at 4 o'clock, they're going to um, release a video where the captain will be announced. Is it important? Does it matter? Yes, well, it matters in rugby on a, on a practical sense. I think... Uh, Does it, though? Like, can anybody not just go and talk to the referee and say, right, OK, or yeah, or point to the post? Like, it's not, it's not that complicated. That part of it is not that complicated. I think it matters in the context of this particular Ireland squad. Who does Andy Farrell feel is the leader of this particular squad? I think in previous uh, regimes, if Joe Schmidt was still there, perhaps it mightn't be as illuminating. But we don't know much about this team. We don't, like, we, we're taking stabs in the dark around certain areas of his starting team for Scotland. Once Sexton is given the captaincy today, we know a little bit more about Andy Farrell and his view, view of the squad. We know that Farrell is backing Sexton for uh, the medium term at the very least. Uh, look, uh, and you can see exactly the pressures he's under, um, the financial pressure to achieve in this competition. Was it 80% of the entire revenue that the IRFU generates is generated from the senior international team? Something, it's some ridiculous figure anyway. It's, a, it's massively weighted towards the senior international team in terms of the, the money that they generate. A lot of that's in sponsorships, some of it's in TV rights. A little bit of it is in how they actually perform in the uh, Six Nations. There's prize money for this. So they're sitting down with him saying, we need the prize money. You need to do very well. That's like his KPIs to uh, use the bullshit management speak, are to win games. And not to like, oh, well, I'm picking my team with the World Cup in my head. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? That's yeah, four years away. Yeah. So, like, that's not going to happen. He's like, win games. No, and, and I accept that for now, but it is interesting that the KPI is winning Six Nations games because they are the most frequent games that you have. Should our KPIs be altered with a view to the longer term and not getting uh, brought back down to earth at the next World Cup? because beyond that then there would be greater implications of perhaps breaking that glass ceiling. Maybe we just need to forget about the World Cup. Maybe we just need to win and win and win and win and have a winning culture and just roll that winning culture off the back of a good Six Nations. I don't know, the next World Cup's in France, isn't it? Yeah, like they, those again, World Cup, great record in France. French World Cups tend not to go our way. <laughs> we love them. Well, we're not going to stay in the shithole in Bordeaux on the, uh, on the outskirts of... Um, let's let's an, not make an, that uh, affirmation just yet. ...an industrial estate. Right, it's uh, 11 minutes past 8 this morning. Let's uh, move on to Munster. Um, Keith Earle saying that people need to stop comparing us with the old Munster. Things have changed. Rugby has moved on. And rugby has undoubtedly moved on. Um, Earls was actually part of that old Munster as well. He's the, the last hangover from that. And so he knows exactly what he's talking about. And if he's asking for a little bit of space and time for this coaching tickets to bed down, then I understand that. I do think that the, the team, that they didn't invest enough in this year's playing pool, that they needed to get players in this year, or they needed to blood younger players. Like, we, we don't have, in the aftermath of the game against Racing at the weekend, as the smoke clears, and the dust settles, and whatever they're crappy cliches you want to use. We don't at least have the, well, four or five young lads got to experience exactly what that was like for a significant portion of the game. Mm. He didn't go to those bench early. He went to those bench late. And Darcy's column today is pointing out that what the message that is, I've got 18 or 19 players. Yeah. I do not have a squad of 23 players. I don't trust yet the young players to do me a job in that environment. That much is 
very evident for, for Munster that they don't have a, a 23-man squad that is good enough uh, to compete in Europe at the moment. That needs to change. That comes from signings. That comes from the two players that are going to come in next year. But it should, in, uh, in an ideal world, come from the players that you're seeing now getting minutes with the senior team who are going to become top-class Munster players. And that number is very, very low at the moment. Like It's hard to actually point out any of the, the kids that are coming through at Munster that are definitely going to make the breakthrough next season because... Well, uh, Darcy is talking about the Finian Witcherly, but there's two Witcherlys, right? So yeah. um, they obviously are, are players that you would expect to have... Uh, yeah, so Finian is saying, by all accounts, this guy's the real deal. He's 22 now. You see, that's, like, that's the point. Like it's Is he the next Jack O'Donoghue and that we'll have to wait three years before he fully matures, especially because Snyman and Klein are going to play the majority of games next season. So, like, this was the year to stick him in. So, Billy Holland, obviously a great club servant, but do you benefit from having had Billy Holland play that game versus Witcherly? In the aftermath of it and the defeat, everybody's like, well, we know exactly what Billy can do, and that's, as I said, he's had a great career at, uh, at Munster level, but wouldn't they have been better sticking the younger players in? It's the same argument that I'm making with the Ireland team in that when there's a 50-50 call, if you haven't made the investment that Munster didn't make at the start of the year in the coaching players, in the, in the, sorry, in the, in the playing pool, then you, you kind of wrote that season off. It's, it's, you were saying, like, oh, look, next year they're going to be great. Like, I didn't them say they were going to be great next season. I, think that, uh, I, I don't think that the business that they've done uh, has been a big, fat naught. Like they've done so, like they got Nick McCarthy in, in in between seasons. Like that was obviously with a view to the number nine jersey, which they perhaps view as being up for grabs in a few seasons' time. They obviously signed for next season, next year. It's not enough. To, well, clearly not enough to get them through the pool stages in Europe this year. Like the results speak for themselves. We, like I, I can't make an argument to say, yeah, they definitely did enough. And fair play to everybody involved at Munster Rugby because look at them now. Because I can't stand over that. I'm just saying that what they've done hasn't been. Uh, a sort of chin stroking. Let's wait to see if um, everything's going to be okay. What are you doing though? I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for hamburger today. That's that's the like ah, oh, you know I'm like the the only way to rescue a season where you have made no it's play the kids investment exactly, and then everybody's like oh look, and the kids are the ones who are actually going to be the ones who are betting in Roundtree's systems and Larkham systems. And then everybody, at least I think, has a sense of positivity about it. I agree with you on that. Like when you.